All right. Welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. Hi, y'all. And good Friday afternoon to you. And of course, if we're shaving in an afternoon, that means we're working night shift tonight. I think I got three of them in a row coming up. So, uh, you know, Friday afternoon, school started back, so I was out fighting traffic earlier. Glad to be out of it. Hopefully it won't uh, kill me on the way to work today. Should be all right. I remember how it goes. But anyway, we're, uh, like I said, I mentioned this the other day, over at the Shaved Inn, they're doing Arco Adjustable August. Pretty neat, eh? So, I've got Arco, and I've got an adjustable. Broke out the uh, Super Adjustable here. This is actually the, one of the family razors. This is one of the first uh, safety razors I used when I started shaving, actually. This was in the medicine cabinet. Always had a few blades around, and I can remember playing with it and learning how to use it. And uh, so it's uh, kind of a family one. I never really got verification as to who in the family used it, but it was in the medicine cabinet, so it had to come from somewhere, right? Always my thinking. So, uh, you know, it's a two-sided thingy. It's an adjustable two-sided thingy. Whatever. I know the uh, when you looked at these things, the directions on them were talking about turning them down for some passes and turning them up and adjusting them for this. Makes no sense to me. Turn it up. Turn it loose. Turn it up, leave it up, turn it loose, is what I say. Set on nine, which is the only acceptable setting for a uh, adjustable. No need to be twisting the knob during the shave and stuff like that. It's just another razor. Jeez. Not magical. All that twisting knobs and all that adjustable, that was all hype for them to sell razors. Sorry. It's not really needed. There's absolutely no need to turn a razor to one setting for one pass and then turn it to another setting for another pass. Sorry, there's not. Makes no sense. So uh, we're not going to do that. You know, we run it wide open because anything else is girly. Just how it goes. Now I realize that the fact is you can take it and you can adjust it and you can have it where it's a milder razor or a more aggressive razor but the truth of the matter is once you develop your technique you can adjust how that all works anyway just with your technique no such thing as a really too uh, aggressive of a razor or anything of that matter your technique of iron will uh, iron all that out yes it will so let's get a little bit of the arco on here a little bit of the turkish delight if the uh, tobacco is a big old bucket of german goodness then uh, that's what the uh Arco is for Turkish folks. It's a big old bucket of Turkish goodness. I know some people talk about they don't like the scent and they says it dries their skin and yada yada yada. Whatever. It's a really good soap. It's cheap. Cost effective. Okay. Time I say cheap, people start hollering cost effective. Okay, it's cost effective. And along with our Turkish shave soap here, we're going to use a little Turkish boar brush that we got here a while back. I know that probably doesn't surprise most people. That ought to be plenty of Arco. Actually, that's probably too much Arco, but anyway. Don't see where it matters. So we're going to use our little Turkish boar brush. Let me shake it out a little bit. And uh, like I said before, it's really not a super dense back brush. It's really not. But what it does is it does a really good job. And I haven't had any problems with it yet. It's not a shedding brush. Even though it's a very cost efficient and expensive brush. I haven't had any problems with it shedding. And it does its job without complaint. And it does its job well. We'll get a really nice lather going here. For the uh, super adjustable to work on. Alright. Add a little more water. Cause like I said, I put a fair amount of soap on. I probably could have put about half that amount, but we're gonna get a really good lather out of it, I'm sure. The other day we used the Schick adjustable, the M. And uh, I was talking about the little knob that closes the, or the little lever that closes the safety bar up. And someone made a comment, they thought that that let down the clean. Well, I went back and looked, and I've already packed it back away, I would show you, but 
when that is slid all the way up, the safety bar is right up against the bottom of the blade. There's no way to shave with it that way. So, looks to me like it was made to close and then you could open it for shaving and close it to keep from whatever reason. My uh, sister, I noticed, made the comment that a safety bar means that when you reach in to your shaving kit, you don't slice your finger on a blade. Unfortunately, sis, it doesn't work that way. I have sliced my finger plenty. Of course, on most razors, you can take the blade out and store it, but uh, especially injector razors, the blade stays in. So uh, I have reached in a box of, because I've got razors mostly boxed up. I don't have anywhere to put them out in my little apartment. And uh, I've reached into those boxes and uh, sliced fingers more than a couple of times, more than I want to admit. So anyway, got a little Cafe Bustello going there, if anybody's interested. We got our sleeve. Now be sure when you tighten these things down that they're good and tight. They have what they call the little quarter turn to, to finish tightening them down. And uh, make sure they're tight. If you're going to twist the knob, loosen them, loosen them up. Don't twist, them, don't twist the knob to change the settings with them all the way adjusted down is what I've always been told. And uh, I don't know, seemed like a good, good bit of advice. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I've ever read that in actual Gillette anywhere, but it probably has been written. But once everything's uh, snug down tight, there's not any room for the adjustment to turn, I would think. And yeah, I could see where it would cause problems. It just kind of makes sense. So the blade for today, you know, normally I just use the dollar store blades. And I haven't looked lately. I don't even know if the dollar stores have blades anymore. But I'm running out of those blades, so I'm going to have to find out. But uh, as I've said several times, someone sent me a bunch of good blades here a while back. And by good blades, what most people call good blades. I think the dollar store blades are just as good as anything, personally. But, uh, so this is a, a Gillette 7 o'clock yellow. And when I was, before I figured out that a blade is a blade and a razor is a razor, the seven o'clock yellows were a favorite blade of mine. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we're using today. A brand new one, so it's nice and nice and sharp. About a day and a half growth. Most of that's already gone, of course, on the first path. We'll go do a little across the grain thing here on our second path. Now I could probably just do a touch up. I could probably leave it like it is. And no one at work would ever notice anything was amiss. But we have a routine, so we'll do a routine. We do multiple passes, and that's what we do, and it works great. But uh, I'm going to do my normal two lather passes and a cleanup. So I got a question for you. So school's back in session around here, and they got all the folks running around and all. And as usual, everybody is forgetting what a blinker is for. Do people use blinkers where you're from? South Louisiana, they don't understand blinker. I guess everything's out of blinker fluid. Maybe there's a shortage of blinker fluid I didn't know about. I don't have a clue. I'm sitting waiting in a light earlier, and uh, I'm being nice and not darting across traffic and everything to make a turn. I'm waiting my turn. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden this car comes up from the other direction and makes a turn. Never had a blinker. If they turned a blinker on, I could have went ahead and gone. Been out of everybody's way. Easily, if they'd have put a blinker on. But no. Then I'm going to use a blinker. And you just get that all the time. You just have to guess if people are going to turn around here. Luckily, I'm a fairly defensive driver. I'm probably actually really a defensive driver. I give plenty of people uh, room, plenty of room in front of me and everything to make up their minds what they're going to do but man there's some crazy drivers down here especially in the mornings going to work when everybody's rushing to get to the plant and i guess nobody can leave 10 or 15 minutes early so that they don't have to rush but i'm driving 60. i generally run five miles over the speed limit which i realize is breaking the law and yes i do understand that so i'm talking about people not following the rules and then i'm not following the rules and i understand that but anyway, I'm driving 60, cruise control, because I try to use cruise control everywhere I go. And you got these people darting in and out of traffic, and man, they're making some close, close calls. Running in their Camaros and their 
and there are Chargers and Challengers and all this stuff and Mustangs. Everybody gets a Mustang, think they're Mario Andretti. Used to you had to you had to work at it to have a car like that. Nowadays, anybody can go down and finance it for seven years and have whatever they want. You got a bunch of yo-yos running around with a bunch of horsepower. Yo-yos and horsepower, I say. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you know, when you go and buy stuff and when you do, uh, they check IDs, not IQs. And for some people, that's a good thing. Let me tell you. All right. Well, then tomorrow, all that yammering, we're through with the shave, just about. Get everything tiled off here. But we had about a day and a half growth because I had gone from a uh, morning shave the other day to an evening shave today. About a day and a half. I will call you back in just a minute. Had a call pop up. But anyway, so look how nice. I mean, I really can't say that the two-sided thingies don't work good. They do. Razor to razor, blade to blade. Put a good blade, a good blade being one that's got an edge on it, sharp, into something that's going to hold it where you can shave with it, you can get a good shave. So there we go. We're going to finish up today with the veg. I'm about out of veg. i got to get another bottle of veg, which means i got to make another trip to Lafayette. Actually, I went to Lafayette the other day. I don't know if I told that story. So I get to Lafayette the other day, and I had some lunch, and I gooped around. I went down to uh, New Iberia, which is down around where I used to live. I lived down there for like eight years. And they got a little grocery store there, there that's got really good prices on some good cigars. They earned a three bucks a piece for a uh, Casa de Garcia uh, Churchill. So anyway, I bought me some cigars, and I'm riding around, and I'm going to get something to eat, and the phone rings. Boss says she needed me to come back. So I said, okay, I finished eating and started heading back. And I get over two-thirds, probably three-quarters of the way home. And then she called and said, oh, we don't really need you. So anyway, blew my trip to Lafayette. I'll have to go back because that's where I can pick up the veg and some other stuff there at the store. We'll get it. All right, well, y'all have a great day wherever you are. I got to finish getting ready and get off to work so that we can get there on time with all this traffic we're going to be fighting. Uh, y'all have a good day. You know, you like these two-sided thingies? That's great. They, they ain't so bad. But remember, 9 is the acceptable setting. Adjustable. Turn it up. Leave it up. Turn it loose. And we'll talk to y'all later. Happy shaves to you.